you guys want to get to know us better. So here it is, raw and unfiltered. You know, I had to kind of raise myself in, in, in a way. I learned to be resilient at that point, but my mom was working multiple jobs, so it wasn't her fault at all. I'm grateful for my positivity. Like, I never see the negative in, in anything. It's so perfectly okay to be in that mental rut. I always tell people, it's about how you limit the time between being in that state and being in the state where you want to be. Which Probably the last three years, I started going to therapy and like really trying to dig deep into myself. My thing is 1% better each and every day. Never give up. As long as you have breath inside of you, just keep going. Let's ride out. Big teams, big boys, all right? My highs and lows inherit growth, Mr. Deeds. Went from juggling three jobs to CEO like I'm Steve. Never been no rotten apple, call me John Appleseed. That's how I bleed. God can see no other man can judge me. Call a mic, Mr. International, getting cream. I'm saying the mother told me worth it, now I'm worth everything. Went from Wall Street to Abu Dhabi, straight rolling in a Maserati with women that feel exotic. My life too pristine. Man, you didn't have to do them like that, man. You didn't have to do them like that. It was film day. <laughs> yeah. We gotta we gotta make a statement. Yeah, exactly. We gotta make a statement. Last one. Fly it out, 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 fly it out. Welcome back to the Last File Podcast. We're your hosts, Mike and Jay. Hit that like button. Hit that share button and subscribe to our YouTube channel or to wherever you listen to your podcast. And give us a follow across all of our social media channels at Last Fly Out Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. You can follow me at jlubriel26 across all of my social media accounts. And you can follow Mike at... If Mike was here. So today we have a unique episode. Laptops are, are gone. We don't have anything planned. Um, it was suggested to us by a friend of the show that you guys want to get to know us better. So here it is, Ron Unfiltered. We have our friend asking us questions that we have no clue about, so this could get interesting. So. <laughs> it definitely can. I'm a little nervous, but let's let's jump right into it. Okay, guys. So we're gonna start off with a game. And so, would you rather game? Okay. So I'm gonna ask you five questions, and each of you will answer what you would rather choose. Okay. All right. Question number one: Would you rather never have to pay taxes again, or never have to clean your home again? Oh, never have to. Pay taxes again. Yeah, That's never easy. Never have to pay taxes. <laughs> <laughs> I can clean my house. I do that already. <laughs> okay. Next one. Would you rather find a dead body or be a witness to a murder? You go. <laughs> I'd rather find a dead body. Why? Elaborate. Because, uh, man, it'll be traumatic. <laughs> i actually seen a murder before, so I don't want to do that again. So I'd rather, I'd rather find a uh, dead body. Yeah, yeah, I'd rather find a dead body. I ain't, I ain't trying to snitch nobody out. Like, yeah. you, know, you don't know what that comes with implications. Like, you know, exactly. just, just, I'd rather just find the dead body and I don't know anything after that and just walk away from all that. Yeah. That's fair. Okay, number three. Would you rather get to travel the world for an entire year expenses paid or get 50,000 US dollars cash to spend on anything you want except travel? You already know my answer. So <laughs> you know my IG is travel the world expenses free, you know? Yeah, That's rather, what I'm trying to do. So all the sponsors. Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to travel the world for a whole year expenses paid. 50K come in and out. Yeah, and I'm, exactly. I'm going I'm to get bored. That, that material item, I'll buy it and and everybody knows me, I get so bored of material items so quickly, so it doesn't matter how much it costs, uh, the memories are gonna stay with me. Yeah. Okay, so number four. Would you rather adopt a British accent every time you're having a serious conversation <laughs> or laugh every time someone cries? Oh, Man, that's, that's tough. tough. <laughs> so, so adopt a British accent every, um, every time I try to have a serious conversation? Or laugh every time someone cries. I'm going to go for the first one because I think the second one would just yeah, make me out to be a <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. okay. I already yeah, laugh same. at people with British accents sometimes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay. And then last question. Would you rather always say what you're thinking or never be able to speak again? Oh, I'd rather always say what I'm, thinking, say what I'm like thinking. thinking. Yeah, and I try to do that now. <laughs> some people don't like me for that, but <laughs> yeah, uh, some people yeah, definitely no. don't like me for that one. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next part, and this part is getting to know you guys individually. We're gonna start with Jay, and I'm gonna ask you three questions, and you could tell a story around it, get as elaborate as you can, um, but this is us getting to know 
Jay, and then I'll do the same with Mike. Your questions are not the same. Just okay. FYI. Okay. okay, so Jay, can you describe yourself in three words and please explain why you chose those three words? Intense, committed, and resilient. Uh, for anybody who knows me, I'm an intense personality. Um, and it's because I am passionate about everything that I commit to, right? Uh, just because what I've gone through in my life has taught me a certain level of resilience and through get through each and every obstacle I've been through from my childhood. Um, for anybody who's known me, I've come from very humble beginnings, you know, single family, single parent home. You know, my dad was involved, but it was mostly my mom who was around most of the time. We didn't have very much growing up, uh, a lot of hardships. Uh, I remember walking to you know, libraries to get work done. This is me being 10, nine years old, just because at that point in my life, I kind of knew I wanted something different. Um, I didn't, I wasn't, I remember telling myself when I was like eight or nine, I, this is not how I'm going to end up, like for real. Uh, it was after several things that was going on in my life. So I, I learned to be resilient at that point. Um, you went to the library by yourself? Yeah, man. I used to walk to the Woodhaven Library by myself, 30 blocks from my house, man, like 10, nine years old, which was, you know, if you think about it, it's pretty crazy, right? But my mom was working multiple jobs, so it wasn't her fault at all. It's just a matter of just, you know, I had to kind of raise myself in, in, in a way where I just, if I wanted different, I've always, I didn't know at the time, but I kind of knew that if I wanted extraordinary results, I needed to put extraordinary types of effort. So I kind of just was, you know, if everybody was kind of doing one thing, I just went to the left. I just did my own thing because at nine or 10 years old, what are you doing after school? You're going home, watching TRL, whatever it was in at the time. But I was in the library because I just knew that my only way out was education. Um, and I kind of wanted that. So that was the resilient part. And I think the intense part came from, you know, through that, through all the trauma I was going through, you know, you build kind of a little bit of resentment and angst. Um, and, you know, even as a, young person, teenager, as an adult, you kind of get angry at yourself for not having some of the, you know, why couldn't things be a little easier on me? Why couldn't things be, you know, why did, why do I have to go through this just to get through like just above average sometimes, right? Just to keep my head over water. And I think that, you know, I've just committed to everything I've wanted, you know, through that, you know, through education, through sports, through, you know, my friendships, I've built relationships. I'm just kind of a committed person. And sometimes my intensity comes out in a way where people think I'm angry at them, but I'm, I'm really not. I'm just really passionate. I mean, Mike knows how committed I am to the podcast and this is not a perfect relationship. Me and him have arguments here and there, but it's not, it's never, you know, Mike is someone who understands where I'm coming from, you know, shout out to him. And it's not because I'm a person who, is just angry, but it's just a person that when my passion and when I'm committed to something, I'm pretty intense about it. And for those who know me, if I don't react to a certain situation and I'm not intense, that probably tells you, okay. I, don't, I, don't, I really don't give a <laughs> Like I really, and that's when you should be worried about like, you know, does this person really care about what I'm doing? And, or does this person care about my position in my life? Um, so I, I think it takes a, people to really adjust to who I am. And I've, I've kept, the same groups of friends for long periods of time. So if I consider you a real friend, you probably there for, for with me in my entire life. So um, at first it's an adjustment period, but once you get to know who I am, you don't get offended. Like Mike doesn't get offended by now at this yeah, point. No, no. <laughs> right? he doesn't, you can tell by the way, he, the first time we you definitely got offended, yeah. but like, you know, you don't get offended anymore, right? It's just like, okay, this guy's not coming from a place of, like trying to hurt me, but rather from a place of like just intense passion. So resilient, intense, and committed. It's pretty much the way I would I would probably describe myself. Amazing. Okay, so the next question is from Mike. Um, when you were younger, what did you want to be? When like you, when you were younger, what did you want to be? So like career wise, or what was your aspiration? Yeah. Um, it probably changed throughout the years. Um, or it changed as the wind blows. And I guess that's kind of how I am now. Like, I want to do a little bit of everything. Like, I can't be boxed in. So when I was younger, at first I wanted to be a forensic scientist. And I guess because my mom, she always, like, watch CSI and all that <laughs> to solve murders. So, like, I always wanted to be that person to, like, you know, let me swipe the DNA or the fingerprints or something like that. But it changed. And then I actually wanted to be a lawyer. I told you just before. <laughs> wanted to be an NBA player. had hoop dreams. Um, so, and just now, like, I have my tech career, but I'm also into podcasting. I love fashion. 
Um, so I have different things I want to dip in, dip and dabble in. You know, we have one life to live, so I feel like you know I could do everything. So nice. Yeah. Okay, Jay. What is your favorite childhood memory, and can you tell us the story? Wow. I remember one time my mom took a day off. It was I forgot what holiday was in the in New York. So as I told you in the last segment, my mom was working two jobs at all times, right? So we didn't really have a lot of family time. Uh, but I remember this one particular day she took the day off to take us to Central Park. And I lived in Queens. So getting to Central Park at the time, I was like 10, 11 years old. It took us like an hour to get there. And I remember she made a whole day out of it. Took us to a diner in downtown somewhere. And then just kind of like... You know, I was a big dessert guy. I was severely overweight when I was younger, so I loved dessert at all times of the day. Um, so I remember we had breakfast, then we got some uh, desserts, and then we went to Central Park, walked around Central Park all the time before I visited my aunt up in Washington Heights, and we got, like, dip, good Dominican food dinner there. I remember just having that day with her was very soothing for the soul. And I remember, like, you know, despite my... Maybe, you know, just seeing that sacrifice that she made for that day, just to hang out with me and my brother at that day, was, was, it was just something I'll never forget because I knew, you know, I was very cognizant of the time being the older brother, how difficult things could be for us, but for her not to care and just to have that memory, because she said, like, you know, I, I remember her telling us, I won't ever have you guys this young ever again. Mm -hmm. And I remember she's like, you know, even to today's day, my mom's like, I always see the baby in you. I never see you as an adult. So I'm not a parent, but I can, now that my brother's a parent, he's like, you know, I'm always going to remember my niece or her, his daughter this age. So that always kind of uh, resonated with me. And, you know, whenever I want to take myself back to my soft boy era, I kind of think about that to soften me up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> soft boy era. Yeah. Okay, Mike. What's your favorite memory with your late mother? Hmm. We have so many. Let me see. It's a pin down one. Oh, and can you tell us the story, please? Um, let me see. We have so we have so many, honestly, I can't think of just one that's the best because, you know, but I'll just pick one that's uh recently. Um what is it? We went to a comedy show. So our things are just like going to comedy shows, laughing, having fun. When we people watch, cracking jokes on people. So um, we went to a show, uh, and who was the guy? What? I forget the co the comedian, because we went to so many comedy shows, but it was in, um, in the Bronx. We recently went, um, and we just had a good old time. And like, my mom used to drink, so, but her energy is so dope that like, I'm there having my cocktail and all that. And she's just, and it's just me and her, you know, mother and son date. And she's just lit. The DJ's playing music in the intermission and she's up. And I'm like, ma, did you drink or did you slip something? She's like, nah, I'm happy off of life. And she's just, and it was kind of like, not embarrassing, but I'm like, oh my, you making a show. And like, people was just loving it, coming up to dance with her and just vibing with her. So, you know, that was one of them. Amazing. Yeah. May she rest in peace. Okay, mm -hmm. so Jay, if you had a superpower, actually, I'm going to say if you had three superpowers, what would they be? And why? Superpower. Wow. Um, time travel. I don't regret a lot of things that I've done in my life, but there's some things I would have done differently. Just having you know, some experience I would have told myself, I would have told other people to do things differently. Just knowing how some people kind of ended up now, I wish I had the ability to maybe tell them and be a little bit more forceful or kind of prevent certain situations in their life so they don't have to go back to that. Um, another one's a healing power. It doesn't have to necessarily be like physically healing, but maybe a lot of people have gone that I've met through have gone through a lot of emotional trauma, psychological trauma, and I see how it's kind of stunted them as an adult, and it makes me sad for them. And I wish I can kind of heal that for them. And another one's flying, but not not to 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 try to physically pick someone up because sometimes when somebody feels like they're rock bottom, I feel like sometimes they didn't a little pick me up and. Uh, 
Yeah. Like, you know, like obviously me at flying, I could fly over traffic in New York or Dubai. So that, that would help. <laughs> but like, you know, sometimes just to take someone around and fly them up around could probably help them out. Okay. So Mike, um, what's something you find interesting about your character that you're grateful for? So for example, discipline or you are routine. Like what's something about your character that you are like grateful for? Um, I'm grateful for my positivity. Like I never um, see the negative in, in anything. Like, um, and it, it could come from, you know, a serious situation to like just um, a simple, if we get stood up at the studio, it's like, all right, let's make some content out of this, you know? And so, um, you know, that, that ignorance of just like, let's be positive, like something can always come good. That's taken me a, a long way. You know, coming from where I come from, where there's not a lot, a lot of positivity or positive images that we see, is you know just being ignorant to that and like, no, I could do this, or I could be this person, or why not? I could live in Dubai, Abu Dhabi. So, yeah, yeah, okay. I have to second that for sure. That's one of his most powerful character traits for sure. Always mm -hmm. keeping a smile, and also mm -hmm. you're able to radiate a lot of energy to a lot of other people, yeah. which is good. Well. Okay, so Jay. Um, Tell us a story about a time that you thought things were going completely bad, but they changed over and it worked out for the best. Man, <laughs> there's been so many moments uh, like that. Uh, I think if I have to pick one time when I first came to Abu Dhabi, it was... It was only supposed to be a six month stint and it ended up being extended. And I remember somewhere along the way, I don't know where, like month nine, year one, I just got into like this really bad mental rut and I gained a bunch of weight, didn't feel good about myself, felt like, <laughs> like probably the lowest point I've been as an adult for sure. And then, you know, looking back at it, that's when I really felt found my resilience like I'm, if I was able to get through that and I almost left the UAE because of that time and I was contemplating but it had it not been because of that I would have not gone found the podcast I would have never met Mike um I saved a whole bunch of money so right now I'm straight financially like great <laughs> right uh <laughs> Um, I met a bunch of people. It opened a whole bunch of opportunities that I'm currently exploring right now. So getting through that bad period in my life where I felt alone, I nest, I didn't really like myself at the time. Um, I was pretty much like the, not depressed cause I don't want to offend anybody who goes through real depression, but pretty, pretty saddened at the time. Um, and just felt isolated and, you know, had it not been for me getting myself my my lovely girlfriend who's off the, who's off the air right now um my family and my best friend who i spoke to about the situation i don't think i would have gotten through that time period in my life and i've learned that if i can get through that i can literally get through anything so that's probably something that where i thought that the world was collapsing and ended up being one of the best times of my life one of the best things that could have happened to me to get to the one of the best times of my life and just quickly to add to that, if there is someone watching right now who is in that mental rut that you you were in, what would you give them as advice? What would you tell them? It's so perfectly okay to be in that mental rut, but you have to, I always tell people, it's not about being anxious. It's not about being depressed. It's not about being saddened. It's about how you limit the time between being in that state and being in the state where you want to be, which is presumably a state of happiness, a state of stability, a state of like mental calmness. I think you have to learn how to decrease that. And the way I do it is by talking to myself. Literally, I always tell myself the, the most important conversation you'll ever have is the one with yourself each and every day. So what you tell yourself dictates your mood. So I make sure I have conversations with myself. And for anybody who knows me, like I actively talk to myself, like, you know, former athlete, Mike, as you probably know, like you, you're always talk, having conversations yeah. with yourself. So I'm always trying to get be my own cheerleader at, at all times. So if I could tell anybody there, just learn how to be your 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 biggest cheerleader. Yeah. OK, that's perfect. OK, so, Mike, um, what is something that you've come across in your time in the UAE that you didn't think you'd ever experience when you were in New York? 
Hmm. Let me see. Honestly, being from New York, it's not much that can shock me or that can blow me away or that I'm stunned at. So, um, to be honest, there's nothing really. I feel like New York prepares you for anything. You know, is okay. is if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> That's really a fact. <laughs> and like, I feel like this is easy. You know, so yeah, I'm not I'm not shocked. There's no, like the culture shocked is. You know, I'm in a Muslim country, or anything like that. But is we have. Um, Muslims in New York and things like that. So I've seen you go to 125th Street, you see people with the Kanduras and the Gutras on. So, you know, it's nothing really. But just to kind of elaborate a little bit more, when you first came, it was in 2015. 2015. And there was a lot happening like in the economy and stuff. Do yeah. you feel like the time that you came was the best time to come? And do you feel like you were able to integrate into like the workspace like in a, in a good way or was it easy or was it something you found a bit difficult in the beginning? I'm saying the first six to nine months. Yeah, no. So the first six to nine months, the, the adjustment for me was not having family or friends close by. That's the biggest adjustment. But as far as work is concerned, um, you know, I've worked for Wall Street firms and that pressure is, is real. It's you can get fired where I think out here this is pressure, but it's, you know, inshallah. <laughs> we'll get things done <laughs> yeah. you know so, it sorry, ain't, sorry. I mean, so you know not to say anything about that but like <laughs> that ain't pressure is hey get this done or you're fired like yeah. if you got yeah. that on yeah. the line and you have mouths to feed you have rent that needs to be paid it's you're stressed out you're not taking an hour coffee break <laughs> an hour lunch you know 5 p.m you know 5 p.m you're not checking out you're still, you're on your Blackberry on your iPhone, answering emails, 10 p.m. at night. So I think, you know, being from New York specifically, man, it just builds us tough, you know? Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah. for me, it was, yeah, for me, it was just more so like the adjustment was, man, I miss my family at the time. Um, I was uh, married then. So, you know, missing my loved one, missing my wife and all that. So that was, that was it. And that was hard. That was the adjustment, you know, so. Thank you for sharing. Um, Jay, I wanted to talk about mental health for men. And um, what does a mental self-care day look like for you? Oof. If you do have one. And if you don't, what would what would it look like? Uh, for me, I have to get some sort of exercise in. Some something. I think that's my... As someone who's in, who has an intense personality, I need an outlet to sort of like relieve the pressure valve. So for me, like a good intense workout, like thanks to Mike for in recently introducing me to Barry. So now I've become <laughs> like a Barry said, honestly, it's like the type of workout that I like because I'm pretty a rah-rah person and those intense, those, those workouts. You're an ambassador are, now, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the rah-rah, I'm like a rah-rah person. So I, I feel like when I, I'm in those workouts, I kind of, I kind of let go of a lot. And then... I always like to spend at least an hour by myself, complete silence or, you know, just away from people, uh, just sort of talk to myself, regroup myself, see where I'm at mentally. And if I had a good, like a good, solid conversation with a friend of mine, my best friend and I speak almost every day. So that's like a good, that's someone who's seen me early day. Not a lot of people know who early day John is, but he does. So to have that person sort of like be able to speak with a lot of context because they have so much background on me. And when I say something to them, to them to accurately pick up on the context, to understand where I'm coming from really does a lot for me. So I, I think that men, I think me and Mike talked about this on, the, on an episode this season, men don't really talk to each other like that me and my best friend i've always had that person who i talk to another man and now that i found mike me and mike talk a lot intimately about things off camera and we challenge ourselves and i think as men that's good to have that man conversation because i think growing up as men growing up you know like coming from a dominican household and everybody knows about dominican men they're very machismo so like speaking about your emotions and speaking about things you're going through was like almost a no-no men boys don't cry boys don't do this blah 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 so you know, kind of flipping the script on that and men, like always having that male energy where I can kind of just speak to him, speak to somebody is, is always is always good, you know. Um, so, yeah, some exercise, some time alone and to, some time to talk to my friend or my best friend or anyone who knows who I am as a person, man or woman, um, is, is, is what a mental health day would look like for me. 
love that. Yeah, I, just, wait, I just want to add to that too um, with the Barrys. That just speaks to our relationship because I remember that morning he was like, "Yo, what's Barry's? I don't like it." And he was kind of like, "Not one of the like." It. I said, "Like, yo, I have a bad hip. Yeah. I got my hip replaced in 2020." And I was like, "Look, dude, the only people I know who've gone to Barry's are fit dudes who are throwing up at this class." So I'm like, "I ain't. I don't got a six pack. So how's this thing supposed yeah, to look?" He was kind of mad. We was late, and I was like, "Yeah, Yo, you're gonna be happy. We're a little bit late." I was happy. We were and then late. we're doing it, and he's in the mirror, like during the class, he's like, "Yo," shaking his head at me. Then afterwards, he was like, "Yo, it's a good class." Like, <laughs> yeah, it was we're good. both done. <laughs> we were both done. I love yeah. that. Um, okay, so Mike, you did mention that you've been divorced. Mm -hmm. What has that relationship or that the ending of that relationship taught you that you're able to take on to whatever you do next with your, you know, relationships as you go forward? Um, to me, uh, I've learned that everything is a choice. You know, um, any in any type of relationship. So you choose to show up for your partner and things like that. Like it has to be an effort, no matter how much time you knew someone or anything like that, or you think you know someone, it has to be a choice. Even in friendships, like it's a choice for us to, yo, let's record, let's do this, let's put in that effort. Because as soon as one of us doesn't choose this, then that's it, it's done. That's in any relationship. I can know him 20 years, the day it's like, no, nah, I'm not doing this, like, you know, or, I'm not gonna show up for you and all that, then that's how it is. And even romantically, um, never get comfortable or used to a person or think that it's just gonna happen automatically. You have to choose to like, I'm gonna show up for that person. So, yeah. I love that. Um, okay, so Jay, the question I have for you is accountability. So a lot of women, they feel like men and this is a, this is you know this is what the in Instagram the social media is saying. Okay. Men <laughs> lack accountability, and when something is going wrong, um, men struggle to take accountability. So, what's your take on that? And both of you can answer this. But what's your take on men not taking accountability in regards to like when they're in a relationship um, with a female and just not understanding how important accountability can be? I think that women, rightfully so, need more from men nowadays. So their expectation levels, rightfully so, has increased because women are now, you know, closing the gender gap, although there's a lot of work to, like the equity gap and whatever work society is closing, but they still, we still have a lot of work to do on that front. But I think that men have gotten used to not having someone who keeps them accountable. Like men like to say they like accountability, but like not emotionally. And something that Lindsay has done a great job at is whenever I am lacking, she makes it known that I'm lacking and I'm not going to go ahead and pretend that I love hearing it, but I do need to hear it. Right. I always take that with me and I always try to, to implement the criticism or the feedback into what I can do moving forward. Now I'm not perfect. Right. As you'll tell me, but I think that a lot of guys who don't like to take accountability in a committed relationship, that that's probably not the person for you if you're not willing to take accountability, right? And I think that a lot of people are in relationships with people who they shouldn't be in relationships with, and they're afraid to leave the relationship because of X, Y, Z reason. But most likely they're not like you, Mike. Like you know, a lot of dudes are just in relationships because they're they think it's the thing to do, right? Like sometimes mm -hmm. they just like I should be in a relationship because I'm this age or that age. But I I rather be single than to be with somebody who I don't really want to be with and who I don't really value their opinion in any way. So, and I know, I've known of a couple guys who are in those types of relationships and whenever they wanna start yapping about their girl, saying like, oh, she's this, she's that. And then, you know, when you try to talk to them as a guy, I'm like, well, she kind of has a point. And then they start spazzing on you. It, it tells you everything you need to know, right? Um, so yeah, accountability, I think is extremely important. I think that social media has it right. Men need to step up generally. Um, and, you know, be a, at least be open to hearing the feedback from your partner, right? And that goes both ways, but especially with men. I love that. Do you have anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, I think um, when I think of that question, I think more so um, men aren't emotionally accountable. I think, especially nowadays, what you hear on social media is some men feel like, oh, okay, if I'm paying the bills or anything, if I'm financially responsible, um, that's it, that covers the base. You know, 
I don't have to be emotionally attached. And I think because a lot of men now therapy is getting uh, more popular, but a lot of people still or a lot of men still don't tap into their feelings or even understand or know themselves. And, you know, I could say for myself as well, like probably the last three years, I started going to therapy and like really trying to dig deep into myself and to see why do I react certain ways in relationships or why do I... I would say self-sabotage or something th something like that, you know? And um, that's just deeper feelings that I have internally that I didn't handle yet, you know? And I think a lot of men have built up aggression that isn't handled and they just kind of cut that side off, so. And one yeah. more thing to add, I guess. I think as men, our, we think that our biggest value is solving issues. And, you know, obviously, as we know, one big problem in any relationship is financial, right? So yeah. we think when we can provide we're solving an issue and that's like covering the basis. But as we know, women are now bringing money to the table yeah, now, right? Exactly. So they don't, a lot of chicks don't need your money anymore. So when yeah. you take away that, that feeling good element of it, like, Oh, I'm here to solve your issues. And you're like, okay, what else do I do as a man? Right? Like I have to now open up emotionally. Um, how can you make her feel emotionally how can you safe? Make emotionally safe right? right? A lot of people could feel financially security safe, but some people may not feel emotionally safe in that person's hands. So we need to do better as men, to sort of try to be open, try to make it a safe space whereby your partner can voice their opinions and for them not to be, feel like, you know, scared of being blown up. And that's something I'm currently working on too, right? Like, because for anybody who knows me, I don't take criticism the best sometimes, but I always do listen. I always do listen. I'm always listening, but it's just a matter of just when, when do you catch me? <laughs> 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 okay. So Mike, um, my question to you is, um, what are your top three icks in a relationship? Oh, I want to know too. Three icks. <laughs> so first ick is um, jealousy. So I definitely can't handle someone that's jealous, um, that wants to possess me or, you know, feel like I'm their property. I feel like we should both be secure in who we are. And especially um, if I'm showing you like, hey, we're together in this, we're committed. Um, I, there shouldn't be any reason to be jealous of of anything, you know. And I'm pretty transparent and and just open about things. So I would hope that that's the case. Or maybe I need to do a better job, but I can't do someone that's jealous and possessive. Um, second thing is I would say being open minded. So open to traveling to different destinations, exploring different cultures. Um, I don't like someone that's just stuck in their ways. It's like, let's try it. Let's see if we like it. Let's try a different sport, you know, um, or let's try a different cuisine. Um, third thing is uh, I'm a foodie, kind of a low key fat boy. So I love someone that knows how to cook and I cook as well. So that's like a love language. Let's cook together. Let's go out to certain restaurants together. So. Someone yeah. with a good palate. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so Jay, my question to you is, you're in a relationship right now. You've spoken about it, I think, a few times on the podcast. What does it take to be in a healthy relationship? What advice could you give to guys who are also in that space of, like, looking to, like, just settle down? <sighs> healthy, not you have to. You have to be in the right mindset. Because me and my girl have been doing long distance for the majority of our five-year relationship. And I think you have to be open to that. That's first and foremost. A lot of guys say they want a relationship, but they want to be in the street. You have to choose one or the other because you can't be in the street and be in a relationship. Those, those two things don't go together. Now, that's not to say that guys can't go out. All right, you can go out every once in a while, but you're going out just looks differently when you're in a relationship. So that starts there. So you have to be in the right mindset. Two, you have oh, to. Wait, I will add. When you go out, that's a rare sighting because you don't go out. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a rare sighting for me because these streets are just asking for danger, as yeah. I've said before. So um, you have to be willing to communicate. That's that's two communication, and it has to be effective communication. It can't just be. Yo, this is my problem with you, and then walk away from the room, which I've do I, I've done in the past. So that definitely doesn't help. You have to have a dialogue, yeah. um, and you have to be open to hear what that other person is willing to say. Um, you have to compromise, one way or another. All right, there's gonna be things you don't like about the other person, and you just have to have a serious conversation with yourself as to what are my negotiables, and what are my non-negotiables. Is her habits of 
X, Y, Z things that I get annoyed by in the morning? Is it really worth bringing up to her just to start an argument? Just clean up after her, do what you need to do, whatever you don't like about that person and just move on because it doesn't, you're just adding stupid tension each and every day. So right mindset, communication, and just really analyzing your non-negotiables and also being, being a, that person's safe space, right? You have to learn how to be that person's safe space and two, having fun. Right. Like at the end of the day, you have to have fun with the person, find what you like to do together and just keep doing that. Right. Um, one thing me and Lindsay like to do is we like to travel. Right. But it doesn't always have to be traveling to an exotic destination. It could be traveling to Abu Dhabi to go to our favorite beach club just to spend the day together. Right. And I think if you have those elements, you are you're kind of in a good space. But I think that guys or at least men that I know see other people in relationships and they kind of get FOMO about it, but they're not really in the right mindset space, right? Because if you hear about dating nowadays, it's like a swamp out there, right? So they're like, oh man, I wish I could find one just like the one you got, right? <laughs> but like, that took me years to find that because I was also, when I lived in London, going through a swamp too. And I was like, there ain't no way I'm bringing any of these women to, to my mom, right? And it's nothing against them, but I wasn't in the space to, to I don't want, I didn't want a girlfriend at the time. So that was perfect for me. But when you find that person, and like we, me and Mike talk about, it's all about timing. If you're not in the right mindset, you could, you're going to burn and destroy that person and, and, and they just may be collateral damage. So thankfully for me, I was in the right mindset and that's the first step. Do you want to add to that as well, Mike, about what it takes to like be in a healthy relationship? No, no, I'm listening. I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> My man out here in class right yeah, now. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so um, this next two questions. And, and one more thing. I guess one more thing. As a, as a man in a relationship, you can't feel FOMO about your single friends. Because I oh, there's guys who they see their boys. I, you could, I don't, I, for, I'm using Mike as a complete example. Mike likes to go out. He does his thing. There's some guys who could be looking at Mike like, damn, I want to be in the streets right now. Like if you, they're like, oh, I want to be in the club. I want to be around the girls. I want to be around the bottles, right? But you kind of have to let that, when you're in a relationship, you kind of have to let that go and you have to enjoy what you have with the person that you have, right? So yeah. there's plenty of things that I do with Lindsay that I don't know do with my boys, right? And I don't, and the things that I do with my girlfriend, I don't ever think about like, damn, I want to be in the streets though. Now, when there's a time and a place where you can go out with your friends every once in a while, that's healthy, right? Me and my boys do an annual boys trip together. And I've been doing that for like seven years now. That's not going to go away just because I'm in a relationship and I'm married. I would hope that my girlfriend has enough trust in me, whoever I'm with, to be able to do that. It's never been an issue because I keep doing it. But you have to have your time in your place with your guys and you have to have your time in your place with your with your person, right? Who you're going to spend the majority of your time with. Yeah. And I think that's just uh, emotional maturity as well, because I think everyone has that. If I'm not in a relationship, oh man, I want to be in a relationship. It looks so nice. I'm going through this. Then when I finally get in a relationship, <laughs> it's like, I wish I was single again. <laughs> Could do whatever I want. So it's just understanding yourself and being comfortable in your shoes and where you're at in life and where you're at in a certain time period. I love that. Okay. So the next part is your top three. Okay, mm. so I'm gonna say top three, and whatever comes to mind, we're not thinking about this, whatever comes to mind first is what you guys will say. Um, Mike, I'm gonna start with you first. The top three countries you visited. Brazil, Greece, and uh, I'm gonna say Cape Town. I was gonna say Scorpios yeah. is hard to leave off the top I know, three. Yeah, Greece. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Jay, I'm gonna to come to you now. Top three music artists that you love that's easy future drake and don Tolliver just cracked my top three for sure did yeah. you see him yesterday no i haven't been to bread it's like I, it's out. he told me about the disaster <laughs> i ain't going <laughs> i'm good okay um mike your top three food dishes Oof, it changes how i'm feeling but i'm always stick to og i'm gonna put caribbean food in there that's like jamaican puerto rican dominican food um Number two is Italian. Number three, I would go with how I'm feeling. I'm gonna say Japanese. Yeah. Okay, Jay, your top three cars. Cars. Or car brands that you like. Ooh, Porsche, uh, Mercedes Benz, and gotta go with Bentley. I'm a Bentley guy over Rolls Royce. Okay, Mike, last one. Your top three fashion brands. Ooh. The OG number one is Ralph Lauren. 
Um, <laughs> number two, who am I going with? Number two, um, number two, oh, LV, of course. When, when I got some money, little LV. Um, and then number three, uh, I'm gonna say myself. So, you know, my <laughs> pants are designed by me. Ooh, so, there you go. Coming out soon. It. I dip and dabble, you know, <laughs> okay. got the sewing machine in I the house. I gotta come up with a nickname for yeah. a fashion mic brand, uh, fashion, <laughs> fashion mic. So, something that I like to do, if you notice my comments under mic, I come with like these different monikers because as Mike has different personalities. So, <laughs> whenever he's in his Latin mode, he's uh, Miguel Lorenzo. <laughs> I think I made up a name for him when he was in Greece. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you have a nickname for Jay? Who? No, that's just Jay. <laughs> Jay every day. I'm, I'm, sto I'm stoic. <laughs> I love that. Okay, this is the last game of the of the episode. It's called a UAE trivia game. So I'm gonna ask you five questions about the UAE. Mm. The minute I ask the question, one of you has to go first, but you you say your name. So for example, when I ask a question, if you know the answer, you don't say the answer. You say your name, and then I'll choose you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so don't shout out the answer. Say your name. Mm. Deal? Deal. Okay, the first one. How many Emirates are there in the UAE? Right. And can you name them? Can you name them? <laughs> you go first. <laughs> <laughs> it's seven Emirates. Okay. It's uh, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Sharjah, Fujairah, Ajman. Um, what's the other one? Omar Queen. And then... Um, Oh, you know. oh, Rack. Oh, Ross all came in. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. all right, so all you right. get that one. Okay, the next question. What is the name of the capital city of the UAE? Jay. 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 Abu Dhabi. <laughs> <laughs> Good, okay. Number three. What is the official language of the UAE? Mike. Yeah. It's both Arabic and English. There's one. Or uh, English. Arabic. No, Arabic. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> got it. You <laughs> can't that's two one, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's two one. Okay, this one might be a bit tricky, but let's see if you know. What was the British nickname for the region of the Emirates before it was united? Trucial the Trucial States. No. No, ah Sorry. damn. <laughs> With the official name before it was No, UAE? the nickname before it um became the UAE. Yeah. And I'm giving you a clue. It was, it was, so the, the history behind it, I'll just tell you quickly. In the 16th century, the United Arab Emirates were controlled by the British. So in that period, many pirates were operating from the harbors in that area. And this is why it has that name. Cornish. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you, it's called the pirate, it used to be called the Pirate's Coast. The, the Pirate's Coast? Yeah. Really? Oh, okay. I so didn't know that. Pirates. I thought it was just, fact, just yeah. I guess the Trusel States was the formal name. Oh, okay. Yeah. This was the British nickname. Okay, so still at 2-1. Okay, last question. Um, what is the name of the emirate that lies in between Sharjah and Umm al-Qawain? Sharjah. <laughs> What's next door to Sharjah? Sharjah? What's next to Sharjah? Ajman. Well, you didn't say your name. Sorry. <laughs> Ajman, <laughs> Ajman, yes. All right, so it's a 2 2. I'll give it to him. It's uh, me. Yeah. You got yeah. it. Well, that was the UAE trivia. You guys did well. Um, and then just kind of for the outro, Jay has message of the day on his Instagram all the time. Oh, man. But today I'm going to throw it to Mike. Ooh. And Mike, but Jay, you can also tap onto this, but Mike, what would your message of the day be? Um, where you are in life right now, if you could give the listeners a message, what would yours be? And then Jay, what's your message of the day? Message of the day is, uh, and I posted this yesterday on uh, my Instagram, is keep going. Um, whenever you feel down, you might just be right there. It might just be that one conversation you have. It might be that one paper you submit if you're in school, or it might be that one presentation you give at work that could change everything. So um, just keep going no matter what, never give up. Um, as long as you have breath, in, breath inside of you, just keep going. I think my message of the day, it's actually this morning um, when I was on doing active recovery, just be 1% better. Every time I'm at a workout, I, I know my body can go 1% better than I did the previous workout. So I'll, I'll put up the incline 0.1 anything to make it 1% better, a minute extra, 30 seconds more. And I think similar to what Mike Mike was saying, um, 
I think each and every day people, it's two things. You have to find people who are going to motivate you, but you have to be your, you have to be the own engine that runs your car at each and every day, right? Because when you don't have those people around you, I think some people lose that sort of motivation. So it goes back to what I said earlier in the episode. Just keep telling yourself 1% better because you never know what day is going to be the day that changes your life. Um, you just have to have a destination that you're walking towards for sure, but it has to be 1% better. And I think, you know, being around people that when I, every time I go back home, I, I kind of get motivated a little bit because you see people that are in the same place year after year after year. And they say the same thing to sound good. And it's sort of like kind of depressing a little bit because I kind of tell Lindsay this all the time, like when we're 40, you're going to have people saying the same thing and the same thing and the same thing and the same thing. And it gets frustrating because at what point you're going to just have your coming to Jesus moment. Me and my, me and my best friend have this thing called coming to Jesus moment. There has to be coming to your life. Be like, this is what I'm going to be for the rest of my life. Right. And I, I refuse to have that coming to Jesus moment because I think I'm just going to keep getting better and better and better each and every year. So my thing is 1% better each and every day. Like that. Yeah. So that is it for today's episode. I guess <laughs> everyone like, <laughs> like this, <laughs> like this new video, share this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Again, you can follow us at last flight out podcast across all our social media accounts. You can follow me at jlubriel 26. If Mike was here. Yep. See everybody Peace. next week. Peace. I like to pristine. Man, you didn't have to do them like that, man. You didn't have to do them like that. It was film day. <laughs> yeah. We got we got to make a statement. Exactly. We got to make a statement. Last flight out. Last flight out. Last flight out.